Hey guys, it's Haley and welcome to another bookish video. Today we are going to be doing the mid-year book freak out tag. I love doing this tag video. I think it's so fun to kind of wrap up your reading at the mid-year point. So let's go ahead and get into all of these questions. And I know this is a tag. Obviously I wasn't tagged. It's fine. Uh, I think you should do this video if you aren't tagged. I'm tagging you right now. Take me doing this video as a sign. You should do it too, because I love to hear about what everybody's reading year has been like in 2022 so far. So let's go ahead and get into the questions. The first one is what is your best book of the year so far? And y'all, I have a top five. I have multiple answers for a lot of these questions. I'm sorry, I just cannot be bothered to pick one. I cannot narrow it down. It's quite impossible. So I will start at number five and work my way up to number one. These are ranked. My number five best book of the year is There Are No Saints slash There Is No Devil or There Is Something About a Devil, blah, blah, blah. This duet by Sophie Lark, it's a dark serial killer romance. It is so fun. It is so hot. It is so intense. It is like Fifty Shades of Grey, but if Christian Grey was a serial killer. That is how I pitch it to people. If you like thrillers and you like romance, I guarantee you, you will love this duet. At number four, we have The Roughest Draft. I freaking love this. Also, I cannot believe there's two romances in my top five. Like, who am I? Obviously, I love reading romance, but like, for the top five? I don't know. This just did something to me. I don't know what it did. I don't know if it was the angst or what, but I was fully involved. I also think the writing in this book is absolutely beautiful. It's not necessarily flowery, but you can tell that each sentence was written with intention. The word choice was very intentional and it is beautifully written. It is a hate ish <laughs> to love romance. It's basically like friends to enemies to lovers. Basically this author duo was really successful writing a book together and they had this huge falling out, but they still have to fulfill the next book in their contract for the publisher. So they're forced to work together again. We're trying to figure out what the heck went down between them, why they had this falling out. And along the way they come together after the falling out. And it is just so good. If you like a slow burn in intense angsty romance this is for you and number three we have we need to do something by max booth the third i love this book i feel like i don't talk about it that much on my channel but y'all have to know how much i love this book i think about this book every five seconds i think it is so so good it is a short tiny quick read it's a horror book that's following kind of like an apocalyptic situation basically this family has to barricade themselves in their bathroom to wait out a tornado but little do they know this tornado is not any average tornado it might spell the end of the world and as they try to emerge from the bathroom after the tornado, they're like trying to open the door and they realize a tree has fallen and blocked them in. So now not only are they dealing with a possible speculative apocalyptic situation, but they're also dealing with being trapped in a bathroom and slowly starving to death. And also, can you imagine being trapped in a bathroom with your family? No matter how much you love your family, that's a nightmare. My number two book of 2022, you can probably guess, it is One Italian Summer by Rebecca Searle. I absolutely love this book. It is a magical realism slash contemporary book about a woman who loses her mother and she was supposed to take this vacation with her mom to Italy to the Amalfi Coast but unfortunately she passes away before they get a chance to do that so she decides to take it as a solo trip and kind of like give into her grief and just like 
take a moment there with her mom. And it uh, is pretty literal because she actually runs into a younger version of her mom while she is on the vacation. It is so heartbreaking, so beautiful. I highlighted so, so, so much of this book when I read it. It is so good. Please everyone read it. And my number one book of the year is Blood Sugar by Sasha Rothschild. And I know this is a controversial pick, okay? Since I gave my five-star review and told everyone it was my favorite book of the year, I have gotten so much hate. Everyone hates this book. Listen, listen up. Hey, if you hate this book, listen to me. I have something to say to you. I don't fucking care. I don't fucking care. Because guess what? I love this book. It made me so happy. It is my favorite book of 2022. And you just have to go in with the right expectations. That's the thing that I've been discussing with my patrons about this book. This is basically like the unofficial buddy read <laughs> of my Patreon this month. Everyone's been reading it. And I think you just have to adjust your expectations before you go into this book. It's extremely character driven. If you need a book with a plot, this is not gonna be for you in the slightest. If you like a character driven book that is more of a study of someone and how their psychology came to be throughout their life, you will love this. There's also a mystery thriller, murder mystery element in there, but it's mostly following the trajectory of our main character, who I will tell you a little bit about later with another question. As for a best sequel, again, I have multiple answers. First, for my romance answer, I have Hook, Line, and Sinker by Tessa Bailey. This is the second book in the Bellinger Sisters series. Y'all know I absolutely loved It Happened One Summer, and I love to follow up just as much. I give this book five stars. It is so cute, and it has great, great mental health representation. And my mystery thriller slash horror pick for best sequel is For the Sake of Two by Judith Sonnet. I just absolutely love this book. Now it is extreme horror, so beware going into it. It is designed to horrify, shock, and offend you. This is not your typical horror book. There's a lot of trigger warnings involved. It's very intense, but I freaking loved it. I thought it was so haunting and well done. I would describe it as Survivor meets Pretty Girls meets Squid Game, I think is how I described it in my wrap up. And that is pretty accurate. And those are all my favorite things. So if you like that, definitely pick up For the Sake Of and For the Sake Of too. obviously. You gotta read the first one before you read the second one. I think the second one is so much better than the first. Like if they just keep getting better with the third, I'm gonna be blown away. The story is so interesting. It's basically like this horrifying, wicked game that's live streamed on the internet where somebody's family member is taken from them and then they get put on this internet show where they have to go through these tasks to save their family member and get them back or else they're gonna be killed in front of them if they fail the tasks. So it kind of asks the question, what would you do for the sake of your loved ones? The next question is, what new releases have you not read yet, but you really want to get to? Okay, also have two answers for this one, a romance and a mystery thriller horror. The romance pick that I have is Book Lovers by Emily Henry. Hopefully I can get to this one this month in June, but I have not gotten to it yet. I know it's like a enemies to lovers, you know, hate to love, cutesy contemporary romance. We all know Emily Henry, that's her bag. And my mystery pick is The Violence by Delilah S. Dawson. Oh my God, this is such a big book, but I am so highly anticipating it. The premise sounds so interesting. We are basically following this woman in an abusive relationship. And while she's trying to escape this relationship, a pandemic breaks out across the world and the disease is called The Violence. And it just basically makes you go absolutely feral insane and kill the people around you. So I think she fakes having the violence in order to have a justification for killing her husband who's abusing her. 
period, period. That's all I need to know. The next question asks, what are the most anticipated releases for the second half of 2022? The first one I have to say is The Family Remains by Lisa Jewell. I liked The Family Upstairs. I was honestly way, way more interested in the twist <laughs> that came at the very end of The Family Upstairs than the bulk of the novel. I thought the bulk of the novel was, you know, not that exciting, kind of boring, but we also know Haley doesn't really vibe with cult books, but I was really, really interested when the twist hit at the end. So I am super, super excited to get an expansion on that storyline with The Family Remains. And y'all know, I just love Lisa Jewell's writing. I will read anything she writes. The other book that I'm really highly anticipating for the latter half of the year is The It Girl by Ruth Ware. I have no idea what this book is about, but I think Ruth Ware's thrillers are always such a fun time. And hearing the title called The It Girl, it just makes me think of like this juicy domestic thriller about this girl who just has it all and it's time for her downfall. Like, doesn't that just sound amazing? Next up, we have My Biggest Disappointment of 2022, which is definitely Credence by Penelope Douglas. If you haven't heard me rant about Credence yet, it I think it's the worst book ever written. I think it's definitely the worst book I've ever read. It is so horrible, so bad. I cannot believe we are romanticizing the things that happen in this book. It is literally crazy. I'm not going to even waste my breath telling you the synopsis because don't read it. It is so horrible. And the sad part is, is I was just starting to get into like darker, more taboo romance when I picked this up and it really turned me off from the genre. But on the bright side, it has made me look with a more critical eye at the books that I'm consuming specifically within the dark romance genre. I'm going to be talking a lot about that in my June wrap up because I've been reading dark romance this month. You'll just, you'll have to wait for that one. And my biggest surprise of 2022 is Good Rich People by Eliza Jane Brazier. I absolutely adored this book and I did not expect to. I honestly went into this one with really, really low expectations and it totally blew me out of the water. And that was because I originally gave this author's debut novel a one star. It was my worst book of 2021 last year. So I did not think that I was gonna like her follow-up. A lot of people were recommending it to me though. So I went out and got it and thank God I did because it was a five star. Not only is this cover absolutely iconic and beautiful, but the plot is also super interesting and it's not your basic domestic thriller. I would say if you like the salacious rich people drama, but you're sick of the same domestic thriller plot over and over, which was totally me, you have to pick this up because this is about a rich family who rents out their guest house on their property for super, super cheap. And once they get a new tenant in there, they kind of have a competition between the family members to see who can ruin that person's life. Yeah, we're really fucked up. And the writing in here is just like kind of weird, kind of trippy. I love those kind of weird books. Like the writing in Bunny is always like my touch point when I compare books like this to. So if you're a fan of that kind of woo woo writing style with the based in reality elements of a juicy domestic thriller, you're gonna love it. The next question asks, what are the new favorite authors you've discovered in 2022? This one's so easy for me. I have read so, so much Lucinda Berry this year and I really, really enjoy her. I love, 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 love her mental health representation. Love that she comes from the perspective of somebody who is trained in the mental health field and still writes thrillers in a way that is ethical. I, I just love her so much. I think she's doing such great things for the genre and for mental health representation in general. And my other answer for this question is, of course, Judith Sonnet. I really, really love the extreme horror genre, but it's hard to find a woman writing in this genre. Like there's a lot of dark romance that's written by women, but not a lot of just straight up, 
give me the most extreme horrifying horror book I've ever read. And that is what Judith's sonnet constantly serves me. Also, I just really like her as a person. She has the best Rex, I say this every time I talk about her, you'll have to follow her on Instagram. She's constantly talking about movies, books, horror, things, love her. Next up, we have what is your newest fictional crush? This is so easy, y'all, this is so easy. Taking it back to January, one of the first books that I read this year was The Love How Hypothesis by Allie Hazelwood. Adam, Dr. Adam Carlson. Paging Dr. Adam Carlson, please. Yeah, excuse me. Hi, you're my new fictional crush. Um, obviously, this romance is a teacher grad student romance that is based off a Raylo fan fiction. So the main character is supposed to be Adam Driver as a professor. <laughs> <laughs> duh. I mean, I mean, duh. Literally, duh. This this was written. This man was written for me. Truly. Next up, we have your newest favorite character. And I'm going to return to my favorite book of the year for this question because my favorite character that I've read from this year is Ruby, the main character in Blood Sugar. And I love her so much because we get to see her development so, so in depth throughout the novel. And she's just such a complex person. She is not a good person, but she's also not a horrible person. We see the way that she helps the world and also really hurts it and yet we still have empathy for her or at least I did along the way. She is a therapist. She is this bookish sweet woman who cares for her diabetic cat but she's also a murderer and I love the range there. The next question asks what is a book that made you cry this year and the first one that popped into my head when I read this question is Crying in H Mart. Oh my god. If you like memoirs, this is a great one. It is written by the lead singer of Japanese Breakfast and I absolutely love, love, love her music. So reading her story just really connected me even more to her music. She writes this memoir detailing obviously her life, but it's from the perspective of losing her mom in the past couple of years. There's a lot of talk about grief, about family dynamics, about family trauma, about her culture and how her mom influenced her cultural development as she grew up as a first generation American who moved from Korea. I believe her family moved from Korea. So yeah, it's just a very intense emotional roller coaster. And I feel like nonfiction always makes me cry more because it's real, you know, it's actually happened to this person and this person who I already cared about before I started reading the book. So I would say if you like Japanese breakfast at all, definitely give this a read. Next up, we have a book that made you happy and that is gonna go to Neon Gods by Katie Robert. I don't know what it is about this book. I just really like it. It just made me happy when I was reading it. I was giddy the whole time. It was so fun. It was so scandy, you know? It's just like a scandalous little fantasy romance. Who doesn't want that? Well, I didn't think I would want that, but apparently I do because I really enjoyed my time reading this book. Like thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. Katie Robert can do no wrong in my opinion. Oh, I should probably tell you what this is about. <laughs> this is a Hades and Persephone retelling. It's an urban fantasy, but it is a lot of romance. The fantasy plot definitely takes a back seat, but I still liked both plots, so whatever. Um, the world building is really cool. How like Olympus is a city in the United States. I like that aspect of it. And the romance was also just really, really hot. Um, there's a lot of kinky stuff in here. I would say it's not as scandy as the like reviews make it out to be, but if you like smut, you'll like this. But it's also not just like straight smut. You know what I mean? Like I did not expect any kind of like cutesy little romance plot in here but there was, and that just like made me happy. Also, I had no idea what to expect. Y'all know I'm not a fantasy girl. So this one was a big surprise as well. The next question is the best adaption that you watched in 2022. And for me, I would have to say normal people. I 
not quite sure when Normal People came out, if it came out at the end of 2021 or early 2022, but I read Normal People this year and I watched the adaption. I thought both were phenomenal. It is a contemporary kind of romance, but more again, just like a character driven character study of this man and this woman throughout high school to early adulthood as they're kind of on and off with their relationship and figuring out what they want out of life. And I just really thought it was beautiful. I really connected to it. I think if you're in your 20s, you will definitely connect to normal people. I connected to both of the main characters. I think that's a pretty common experience. And I thought it was captured so, so beautifully on the Hulu series. The next question is so, so, so fun. It asks, what are the most beautiful books that you've bought this year? I have a couple that I bought and a couple that were gifted to me. First up, we have Blood Sugar, obviously. Look at this summary cover, beautiful, I love it. Then, I already talked about Good Rich People. Hello, look at this beauty, I can't. Then we have The Violence, I mean, simple, exquisite gorgeous and that one was gifted to me and then also we have we are all the same in the dark which is my favorite paperback that i got this year i did not buy it it was gifted to me again but oh my gosh i just love it i love it i love that i could be out by the pool reading this and it's like it still gives me summer vibes but it's not like the typical summer vibes it's like oh she's she's giving quirky dark summer vibes i don't know I just like that. <laughs> so those are my favorite covers and I'm unfortunately not going to answer the last question for you because we would be here for approximately an hour and a half. Uh, the last question asks, what do you need to read by the end of the year? I'm just going to link some videos for you guys. I filmed a going through every book on my physical TBR video a couple months ago. So if you want to see everything on my physical TBR, you can watch that. I also had a huge, huge haul last month with over 60 books that I brought into my physical TBR. So if you want to see every single book on my physical TBR, that video and the haul, those are everything, everything watching those back to back, like you will literally see everything that I need to read that's on my shelves. So I will link both of those for you, but that is going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you made it all the way to this point, don't forget to like this video if you liked it and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And also don't forget to read a book and go to therapy this week. Duh. Okay. Thank you guys so much for watching again. I love you so much and I will see you in my next one. Bye. Oh,